This is going to be a study on the subject of salvation. A lot of people have a lot of questions about salvation because they're not sure about their salvation. They don't know if when they lay their head in bed at night, are they going to wake up in heaven or hell? You know, they're afraid, they're scared. So I want to break some chains off of you and give you some assurance of salvation. So really, a lot of people... You'd be surprised they don't even know what saves a person. When And when you first get saved, the devil sends people to confuse you about salvation. For example, someone told me to be saved. When I first got saved, a man walked up to me in the store and said, if you want to be saved, you're going to have to be baptized in Jesus' name only. I had another person come to me which was my own family member that said, to be saved, I have to be baptized, and not just baptized anywhere. I had to be baptized at a church of Christ. Uh, someone told me to be saved, you must go to church on Saturday. They said that I'm, I'm taking the mark of the beast, and I'm going to go to hell for going to church on a Sunday. You know, people just continuously adding things to your salvation. Somebody said, I must pray a prayer to be saved. Somebody said, if I did pray a prayer when I got saved, then I really didn't get saved. I mean, it's back and forth with everything. Somebody said, you have to go to the altar to get saved. Somebody told me, if you went to the altar to get saved, then you probably really didn't get saved. I've heard it all. Um, of people adding to, what does it take to be saved? But uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 makes it very plain. And I say it in almost every video. The Apostle Paul gives us the gospel. He says, Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So Jesus Christ died. He died for your sins. He was buried and resurrected. That's the gospel, and that's what you trust in to be saved. Not in water baptism, not in going to church on a certain, certain day, not in praying or not praying. I mean, when I got, the night I got saved, I knew I was a sinner. I knew I was going to hell. I did pray a prayer, but it was what took place in my heart that saved me, not the words of my mouth. There is no magical prayer. I'm all for saying a prayer when you get saved. I'm not against it in the slightest bit. I think it's great. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, Romans 10, 13. I'm not against it, and I'm not just saying you have to pray a certain magical prayer to be saved either. I mean, it's about a heart thing. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, the question to ask yourself is, if you were hanging on a cliff and Jesus said, why should I take you to heaven with me and not let you just fall into hell? The correct answer is, because I'm relying on the Lord Jesus Christ and His shed blood to save me. Not on the fact that you're supposedly a good person or anything like that. The Bible makes it clear in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And the great illustration is you're sitting, wherever you're sitting right now, you're trusting on that chair to keep you up. So, trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're, you're, you're a sinner. A lot of people don't know, well, why do I need to be saved? Because you're a sinner. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's not debatable at all. You've sinned. Even if you haven't committed adultery and murder, you've thought something foolish. You've not done something that you should have done. You know, there's all kinds of sins. One sin is enough to send you to hell if you don't get saved. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Colossians 1.14, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. It's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, not water, not water baptism. Hebrews 9.12, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. It's not of works works is the bad things that you abstain from doing and the good things that you do when you abstain from not drinking or not fornicating that's good works when you read your bible that's good works but your works bad or good have nothing to do with your salvation it's not going to keep you from getting saved and it's not going to make you saved it's all about what the lord jesus christ did he did all the work on the cross 
He's the one that lived a righteous life. He's the one that fulfilled all righteousness. He's the one that died on the cross and shed his blood. You didn't do none of that. It ain't about you. It's all about him. Romans 4, 5, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, Titus 3, 5, verses like that make it clear. It's not about your works. So another thing, who can be saved? Who can be saved? Or does anything stop a certain person from getting saved? The, the, the answer is anybody can be saved. If they're breathing, they can be saved, and nothing can stop them from getting saved. Some men teach an unpardonable sin can keep you from getting saved. Uh, this could be any sin you commit before salvation. Anything you imagine, there's something that they're going to say, well, if they've done that, then they can't get saved. Uh, some men teach a homosexual can't be saved. If they've committed the sin of homosexuality, then they're saying that they can't be saved. That's not true. If Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole world, 1 John 2, 2, and He is the propitiation for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Does that not include homosexuality? Does that not include any sin? Any sin, period. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Not just a certain person, not just a certain elect. A ransom for all. The most famous verse in the Bible, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God says whosoever, not whosoever as long as they did this or this or this. If it has to do with what they did, then it's no longer whosoever. To say it's whosoever, it really has to be whosoever. The Romans ten thirteen, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And there is a great preacher that's way better than I'll, I'll ever be as a Christian named Jerry Harold Smith and his sermon, God's Three Deadlines. Two of his points were flat out wrong. Uh, uh, I'm going to give you one of the points in the sermon. He says, you can sin away your day of grace. And it, he said this. He said, these are those who are friends of the pastor they attend church, they know their Bible, but they are not saved. These are those in powerful churches who do not know Christ. These are greatly evidenced by a lack of appetite for the things of God and the Word of God. If that means you're not saved, then I don't know very many people that are saved because most Christians today lack appetite of the things of God and the Word of God. Is that not what the, what the last day's church is of the church is supposed to be like anyway where the church has forgot about god so is he saying all the christians in the last days of the church age are lost uh these are the he says these are those who refuse to accept the invitation of the holy spirit of god when it's given so you know maybe he'll say something like if you reject jesus so many times then he then you can't be saved but if jesus died for the sins of the whole world then that counts your sin of rejection if you rejected Jesus a hundred times and you're willing to accept Him and believe on Him as your Lord and Savior now, then Jesus Christ will save you for whosoever. I don't care how many times. I don't care if you have went to a Baptist church your whole life for 40 years and rejected Him the whole 40 years. If you, want, if you know you're a sinner, you know you're going to hell, you know Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and you'll believe on Him, He will save you like that. And you're, going, you're just as saved as anybody. Don't ever let somebody tell you that you can't be saved. They don't know what they're talking about. I don't know how that they come up with this stuff. A lot of it is tricks to get people to come to the altar. That's all, that's all of a lot of it is. They're trying to scare people to come to the altar. But at the same time, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to admit there's probably people that get, there's been a lot of people that got saved by that Jerry Harold Smith sermon. Probably thousands and thousands. But that don't mean that it's right him to say this stuff when it's completely wrong. He's probably messed up just as many. But if, if, he's, if he's true, then it's no longer whosoever. Because it's whosoever, as long as they don't send away their day of grace, according to him. But then it wouldn't be whosoever anymore. So God will save any person. For example, the Apostle Paul himself, 1 Timothy 1, 12 and 13, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry 
who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So Paul committed blasphemy before he was saved. You ever heard somebody say, they blasphemed the Holy Spirit, they can't get saved. Paul did. Paul blasphemed. He tortured Christians. He's one of the greatest Christians ever. What about Manasseh in 2 Chronicles chapter 33, all the wicked things he did? He made his son and his daughter to pass through the fire. He observed times, used enchantments, used witchcraft, dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. I know this is an Old Testament example, but still, it still stands true today. God will forgive anybody. Because look at what he says in 2 Chronicles 33. And when he was, this is Manasseh, and when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed unto him. And he was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem and his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. If God will save Manasseh and Saul, he'll save anybody. I don't care what they've done. If you desire to be saved and you know you're a sinner, you can be saved. Now, who keeps the person? You got all these people that admit you're saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then they're saying you got to keep yourself. A truck driver where I work looked me straight in the eyes and said, you're saved by believing on Jesus. And then when you're saved, you got to keep yourself. You got to keep yourself saved. Uh, that's completely not true. 1 Peter 1.5 says, Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. We're kept by the power of God. He's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from from God. If you're saved, you're safe forever. It don't matter what you've done, you're still saved. The reason you feel like you're lost is because you lost fellowship. If you believed on Jesus Christ and you feel lost, you've lost fellowship through your sin. You can lose fellowship, you can lose assurance of salvation. It's like, you know, you got a father. If you have a falling out with your father and you, you guys don't talk for years, it's going to be like you don't even know each other no more when you go back to talk to him. That's the way it is for a lot of Christians with their heavenly father. He's still your father. Your father's still your father, but you lost fellowship. And all you got to do to get back in fellowship is come to God and say, I confess I was wrong and I want to do better and I want to live for you. And God wants to have fellowship with you more than you want to do with him. It's the devil that tells you that that god don't want to fool with you it's the devil i don't care what you've done after being saved i don't care i don't care if you committed adultery and everything else after salvation god still wants to have fellowship with you you draw not a god he'll draw not to you the bible says if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness the things you did before salvation no matter what it was good or bad it's a separate issue from the salvation itself. The things you do after salvation, good or bad, it's not keeping you saved. It doesn't make you unsaved. What you're doing, it ain't got nothing to do with your salvation. Because you can't do, good, you can't do anything good enough to get it or to keep it. You can't do anything bad enough to not get it or to keep it. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't see how that people just keep coming up with stuff. Oh, you can't be saved if you do this. You can't be saved if you did that. If you did this and this after you were saved, then that proves you really wasn't saved to begin with. You're, you're making it all about you, but it's about the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that fulfilled all righteousness. If I didn't deserve salvation when I got it, what makes you think I'm going to deserve salvation after I got it? Don't make no sense. You're thinking it's, you keep thinking it's about you, but it's not about you. I mean, you got the imputed righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ on your soul. If, you got, if I got Jesus' righteousness on my soul, and my, my unrighteousness ain't being imputed to that, to my soul, then when God looks at my record, He sees Jesus Christ. He doesn't see my sin. So, okay, back on that thing of 
people saying that if you do such and such after you're saved, that that proves that you didn't really get saved. I'm going to show you that that's wrong. Very, very clearly show you that that's wrong. A lot of people say if a person isn't living like a Christian, this means that they're not, they really didn't get saved. They're saying it means that they're a false convert if they commit certain sins. And what you're forgetting is, at salvation, your flesh does not get saved. Your flesh is not born again. You got two natures. Don't forget that you have two natures. I mean, you got the flesh that wants to do wrong. You got the new man in you that wants to do right. And whatever you feed the most, that's what's going to win. If you're not reading the Bible, if you're not praying, if you're not studying, if you're not trying to live right, if you're hanging out with the wrong people, the flesh, you're feeding the flesh. And the flesh is going to do what it wants to do. I mean, any Christian is capable of committing any sin that there is. Somebody says, that, I hear people say it all the time, a changed life. If you don't, they say, if you don't have a changed life, then you really didn't get saved. I don't see how they, I just can't, I've tried to see it, because uh, I hear so many people seeing it, and I'm trying to see that, and I just can't see it. Because, I mean, you can't, I mean, there's obviously something in you that's changed. I mean, you got the Holy Spirit in you. But that doesn't mean that every Christian yields to the Holy Spirit that's in them. God doesn't just automatically make you act like a Christian after you're saved. He just doesn't. He still gives you a free will. He still wants you to choose Him, even after you're saved. And I'm going to show you that the Apostle Paul himself shows you that, there, that, that he's still a sinner, that in that his flesh is just terrible, no good. Look at Romans 7, 15 through 24. He says, For that which I do I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Sin. If then I do that I would not, I consent to the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Paul says when he sins, it's not him doing it. The real him is sinless now because he's saved. It's that it's sin that dwelleth in him that does it. It's his flesh. This flesh is going to the ground. You're getting a new body. And that's when you're not going to have to worry about sin anymore. It says, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good... I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I found then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law in my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Then he says this, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Every single day as a Christian, you got to get up and you got to fight the flesh that wants to do wrong. You may not be struggling with drunkenness or adultery or lying and stealing. I mean, there's all kinds of people that don't, just don't struggle with adultery and drunkenness. There's lost people that don't struggle with adultery and drunkenness. But then you got Christians saying if you committed adultery, you get drunk, then you really didn't get saved. I'm thinking, what on earth are you talking about? You're getting up and, and you're struggling with being lazy. You're struggling with overeating. You're struggling, struggling with pride. You're struggling with gossip. You're struggling with these sins that people, uh, they just forgot that they're sins or something. Because they don't, you, don't, you don't ever hear somebody say, you know, if you're gossiping, then you really didn't get saved. You don't hear nobody say that. I mean, there's all kinds of sins. I mean, have you ever heard somebody get up and say, if you've not read your Bible consistently every day, then you then you are not saved. How often do you hear that? Because they don't say that because everybody in the whole church would be lost if that was true because nobody reads the Bible. Like Just like that J. Harold Smith outline, he said, these, it's these people that don't have an appetite for the Word of God that are lost. And I'm thinking, I guess nobody's saved because I don't meet anybody that has an appetite for the Word of God. All they think about is movies, Netflix, TV shows. That's all that's on their mind. I don't believe these people are lost. I know Christians, they're good Christian people. They don't have any appetite for the Word of God. 
And when you teach to change life as required for salvation, then you're able to set the standard of what someone has to live in order for them to be saved in your eyes. And you can come up with anything. I mean, it's like, you know, I got all these, uh, I got my own personal convictions that I do as a Christian. What if I was to put all those on somebody else and say that you're not saved if you don't do this such and such? I like to read so much Bible in one day. I like to study so much Bible in one day. I like to listen to so much preaching in one day. I like to memorize so much scripture in one week. What if I said if you're not doing all that, then you're probably not really saved? That's completely against the Bible. In, in, in other verses, in Galatians five sixteen through 21, Paul, the apostle, talking to saved people, telling them that they got to walk in the Spirit and not walk in the flesh. Because if they walk in the flesh, they're going to commit all these certain sins here. I'm going to show you in Galatians five sixteen. This I say then, walk in the Spirit... And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay, this is, this is talking about a Christian here because a lost man can't walk in the Spirit. So as a, as a safe person, you got the Spirit, you got the flesh. Which one are you going to choose to walk with? You're going to go by what the inward man wants or are you going to go by what the flesh wants? You got to make that choice every day. As Paul says, you got to die daily. And look at what Paul says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you would. It's kind of like on the TV shows. You, growing up, you've seen somebody got a devil over here on this shoulder and an angel over here on this shoulder. It ain't exactly like that, but it's kind of like that because your devil's the flesh and your, uh, your inward man would be represented by that angel, although it's not exactly like that. You, you see what I'm saying there. It says, For the flesh thrusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one or the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. It says, But if you let of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, Variants, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Heresies. All these people going around saying, he teaches this and this and this. He's not saved. He's a false prophet. He's a lion and he's going to hell. Okay, a heresy is a work of the flesh, man. Are, have you not read Galatians 5 very well? A heresy is a work of the flesh. A Christian can be deceived and teach a heresy and still be saved. Envyings, murders, drunkenness revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So that's very clear. A Christian who does not walk in the Spirit, which is a very, very challenging thing to do. It's easy to get saved, but it's very hard to live like a Christian every day. It's very hard. It's very hard to choose what the new man wants over what the old man wants. And it's a battle. It's, it's why you're at war with the flesh. Ain't you ever heard that, heard that at war with the flesh? I mean, if to say that a, a Christian has to have a changed life for salvation, you're basically saying that a Christian is going to beat the flesh. It's just always going to beat the flesh. Now, you can beat it, but it's going to beat you sometimes too because... I mean, it's just, it's just what happens. <sighs> but I mean, I, I just get sick of hearing people just constantly. Just works, 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 works. That's all it is. It's works. They're adding works before salvation. They're adding works after salvation. And if you realize this, if you realize that the bad things that you do before salvation and the good things that you do before salvation is a separate issue from the salvation itself. The bad things you do can't stop you from getting saved. The good things you did before salvation can't get you salvation. Then when you get saved, the bad things you do can't take away, can't take away your salvation. The bad things you do don't necessarily prove that you're not saved. And the good things you do cannot keep your salvation. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about Him. 
not me. It's all about him and his shed blood. Now, I mean, and I completely understand that. You know, you, you, you see somebody that's just living like the devil. They're drunk. They just don't have any appetite for the things of God. In your mind, you can't help but think this person probably really isn't saved. In your mind, you can't help but think that because a Christian should act like a Christian. And I'm in no way saying that a Christian should just live however he wants to. I mean, if you walk with me every day, you're going to see that I'm highly against sin. If you listen to my studies, you, you see I'm highly against sin. I'm so against drinking that I can't stand it. I'm against smoking. I'm against tobacco. I'm against listening to country music. I'm against pretty much everything. I'm against it. I can find something wrong, something sinful with just about everything. But that doesn't mean I'm going to say if somebody's doing those things that they're lost. It doesn't make any sense to me because you're making it about you again. You're forgetting it's about the Lord Jesus Christ who fulfilled all righteousness. You didn't do that before you were saved, and you didn't do that after you were saved. So what you're doing is a completely separate issue from the salvation itself. And I mean, if you think about it too, why are we going around judging, you know, why should I spend my time thinking about, you know, saying this person's lost, this person's lost. If they're lost, I need to witness to them and pray for them that they'll be saved. And if, if, if it's a Christian that's not acting like a Christian, I shouldn't be saying he's lost, he's lost. I should be praying for him and hoping that he starts acting like one. Me sitting around saying he's lost, that's not doing anything. That's not going to make him get saved. You know, when it comes to judging somebody, okay, say you got somebody that claims to be saved, but they're not living right. That means you shouldn't fellowship with them. That doesn't mean that you got to say that they're not saved. That means that you shouldn't fellowship with that Christian if they're not living right. So when it comes to a change, somebody acting like they got to change life, I don't say that they're not saved because they don't have a changed life. I say I don't need to fellowship with that Christian that doesn't have a changed life because the Bible makes it clear we're not supposed to hang out with a brother that's fornicating, and, you know, drinking and things like that, because then that rubs off on us. Evil communication corrupts good manners. But that doesn't mean I got the right to go and say he's lost when he has the testimony that he's saved. That's, what, that's how I judge someone's salvation. I have to take their word for it because I can't see their heart. God sees their heart. If somebody comes to me and I, and I, I ask somebody, I say, are you saved? And they said, yes, I have believe on Jesus Christ that died on the cross for my sins, yet they're doing all this sinful stuff. I just take the word for it that they're saved, but they're living like a lost person. And then I just pray for them that maybe they'll, maybe I can be uh, a, a set an example for somebody and try to live right in front of them so they'll say, hey, he acts like a Christian and he's doing what he ought to do. Maybe I should act like a Christian and do what I ought to do. Not go to him and say, you're probably not saved if you're living that way. Because that ain't got nothing to do with it. But I hope that this has helped somebody and maybe knock some chains off of you. Because, I mean, you listen to a lot of preaching today. It's putting some chains on people. Putting a lot of people in bondage to stuff, to works. Making people think that it's about them when it ain't about you. If you feel like you're, if you believe that you're lost, and it's not about how you feel. If you believe that you're lost, then you need to get... You need to make sure that you're saved. You could die today. You could die right now. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. If you know that you're lost, then come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and believe on him as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior. He died on the cross and shed his blood. He wants you to get saved more than you want to get saved. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you, if you know you're saved, but you're doubting it because you're living wrong, you see, de living wrong will make you doubt it, as I said before. Just come to Jesus Christ and, and say, I confess my sins, ain't been living right, and I want to live for you, and then start living for Him. Just remember, it's not about the works you're doing or the works, the bad works that you're not doing. Because when you start thinking about what you're doing and what you're not doing, when you're judging your salvation, 
you're always going to doubt it unless you just think you're all that or something. But there are people that think they're all that, that think that, they, that they're getting their self to heaven. But the average person, they're sinning, even if other people don't know about it. And if they're relying on their works to save them in any way, then they're doubting their salvation because of those, that sin that they're either doing openly or secretly. So just remember, it's not about you. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ and what He did for you on the cross. And if you believe on Him, then you're saved or you can be saved if you'll believe on Him today.